In the early 70s in New England, America at Barton Academy, an elite prep school located on the outskirts of town, there was a senior teacher named Paul Hunnam, who lived in the school dorm alone accompanied by his books. He was known for his crankiness by fellow teachers and his students. It was at the end of the semester and the students were ready to go home on holiday and so did Angus Tully, who was packing up to go on holiday to the beach. Teddy, his friend, came because he was running out of supplies to stay in the school dormitory. The school had a regulation where students with low grades had to stay in the dormitory during the holiday. That morning, Mr. Hunham was called to the principal's office. The principal, Mr. Woodrup, was his former student and an alumnus of the school. On that occasion, Mr. Woodrup asked him to stay at school during the holidays to replace a teacher, who was absent, and since he had no plans for a holiday, he finally agreed to stay during the holidays. Mr. Wardrop then handed over a list of students who would stay during the holiday. There was the sender's child who asked for a C from Mr. Hunham. Mr. Hunham was an idealistic teacher. He didn't want to give the student the grade he wanted even though he knew the senator was a big donor to the school. Mr. Woodrup gave up because he knew there was nothing that could change his mind however he gave conditions that if Mr. Hunham didn't properly carry out his duties, he would be given a heavy punishment. Mr. Hunham then went to class and distributed the results of the history exam. Everyone was given low grades including Teddy the senator's son, whom he gave a D and only one student he gave a B plus, namely Angus. Teddy protested because he was afraid of being scolded by his father, so Mr. Hunham gave a solution for them to repeat the exam after the holiday but with the new material where they were told to memorize during the holiday. Angus protested because he wanted to enjoy the holiday. Mr. Hunham said that it was either they did another test or took the grade they had as the final assessment. Since everyone except Angus wanted to do the test, he was forced to accept the decision. Before the students could leave the school grounds, they gathered to send prayers for an alumnus who had just died in the Vietnam War named Curtis Lam, the son of Mary, the canteen manager at the school. After that, the students came out to meet their families. At that time, Angus was still waiting for his family until a call came from his mother who gave the news that she couldn't come to pick him up because she had to go for a honeymoon with her new husband. She didn't care about her promise and was more concerned with her new husband and boldly asked Angus to stay in the dormitory. Angus then went to Mr. Hunham's office where four students who would stay during the holidays were gathered. They would stay for two weeks and would continue studying and doing lots of sports activities, but because the school gym was not ready yet, they would do the exercise outside, even though it was snowy. They were very upset because they had to stay at school under the supervision of Mr. Hunham. Of the five people, there was a student named Jason who would stay in the dorm because he didn't want to obey his father's orders to cut off his long hair. Apart from them, there was another person who would stay on the school grounds during the holidays. It was Mary. She hadn't been able to move on after losing her son and still wanted to be there the last place she met him. She was actually invited for Christmas at her sister's house in Boston, but she decided to just stay at school. Just shortly after they returned to the dorm, there was immediately a problem. Angus lost his family photo which was very valuable to him. He accused Teddy of stealing it. The two of them argued and ended in a fistfight. Mr. Hunnam stopped them and asked who started it. One of them then said it was Teddy's fault. The dinner that evening ended only with Teddy who was not given a share of food as a punishment. He then mocked the food and made Mr. Hunnam angry. He told everyone to be quiet and be grateful that they could still eat. In the middle of the night, Mr. Hunnam secretly went to meet Mary and chatted. The two of them enjoyed the night together while watching the newlyweds game that was trending at that time. Mary said that her son joined the army hoping that one day he would be given a scholarship by the American Armed Forces. However, he had to die and the rich people's children were the ones who could sleep comfortably. The days passed under the guidance of Mr. Hunnam, who led them like a tyrant. They were told to exercise outside and study during the holidays. On the sixth day, they were studying in class when suddenly, the sound of a helicopter was heard. Everyone looked out the window, and it turned out it was Jason's father who missed his son and decided to pick him up. After talking with the parents and the principal on the telephone, it was decided that they were allowed to go home with Jason but Angus still hadn't received permission because his parents didn't pick up their call. Mr. Hunnam tried to help by calling them but to no avail. Angus would be the only one staying in the dormitory with Mr. Hunnam. Angus spent the night with Mr. Hunnam and Mary. At that time, Mr. Hunnam admitted that he enjoyed being alone rather than having a wife. Mary was not convinced by the answer she just heard. She was sure that he was just looking for an excuse. When bedtime came, Angus grabbed Mr. Hunnam's key and walked around the school facilities enjoying his solitude. The next morning, driven by his unbearable boredom, Angus left the class to call and tried to find an empty hotel room but was then caught by Mr. Hunnam who threatened to punish him for his behavior. He didn't care anymore. He trashed the school facilities and went into the gym room that wasn't allowed to be entered yet. He then jumped from the jumping board to provoke his teacher, but soon screamed hysterically after he dislocated his shoulder. 
Mr. Hunham immediately took him to the hospital. Mr. Hunham was stressed, knowing what just happened would surely ruin his career, but Angus tried to make things right by refusing to fill out the health insurance form when asked to avoid any record of his accident being included in the report. Angus went to the treatment room where the doctor and nurse tried to shift the hinge of his dislocated shoulder. After that, Mr. Hunnam told him that as a Burton Academy student, he shouldn't lie like that. Angus responded that he was just trying to help out and asked for nothing but appreciation for his good intentions. Mr. Hunnam then thanked him and told him to keep everything a secret. As a sign of gratitude, Mr. Hunnam invited Angus to dinner at a bar. Unexpectedly, they met Miss Lydia who worked there as a waiter during her free time. Mr. Hunnam looked happy to meet her and enjoyed their time chatting. While she went to prepare for their order, Angus started joking about Mr. Hunham being in love with her and that they had a chemistry, but Mr. Hunham denied it and just let it slide. Shortly after, Angus excused himself to the toilet. Soon after, Miss Lydia came back with their order. She then asked how they were doing in the dormitory, and after that, she invited Mr. Hunham and Angus to spend Christmas Eve at her house. Mr. Angus began to think that maybe what Angus just said was right, but then he was startled when Angus rushed from the toilet with two thugs chasing him. They said that Angus had offended them with his words and Mr. Hunham and Miss Lydia tried to calm them down. Thanks to that, the chat about the invitation was cut off and never brought up again. When they got into the car, Angus asked to open the window while frankly saying that he couldn't stand Mr. Hunham's body odor. Mr. Hunham didn't deny it and said that he indeed had a problem with body odor. Angus thought that it must be the reason why he couldn't get close to any girl. When they arrived at school, Mr. Hunham never mentioned the invitation again until Mary brought it because she was also invited. When she asked Mr. Hunham to come with her, he didn't want to go and even forbade Angus to come with her. Of course, I made Angus really pissed because he wanted to do something outside the school so bad. Mary told Mr. Hunham not to be chicken out and come with her, but Mr. Hunham chuckled and said that he just didn't like parties. However, in the end, he was convinced to come. The three of them left and arrived at what turned out to be a big party attended by the whole neighborhood. Miss Lydia showed up and welcomed them warmly. She then asked her niece Elise to accompany Angus and brought him to the younger section of the party where she provided drinks for her other two guests. Angus enjoyed his time with Elise especially when it turned out that she loved art and wasn't shy to express herself. Mary herself chose a corner in the music room where she met Danny, a school janitor who was really in love with her but she was more focused on the vinyl collection where she found her late child's favorite song. The effects of booze and the memories of her son that shrouded her made her sink into sadness, she almost punched a guest who was about to change the song she was listening to at that time. Meanwhile, Mr. Hunham was served by the host himself. Miss Lydia asked questions about him who never seemed to be with his family. It was revealed that he had lost his mother as a child and ran away from his abusive father. When he got a scholarship from Burton and went to college, he never looked back. She then asked if he had a plan for tomorrow, and that made Mr. Hunham flustered, but rather than asking him out, she instead suggested he do something with Angus to entertain him. Suddenly, a man came to whom she spontaneously gave a welcome kiss. Turned out she was just trying to be friendly to Mr. Hunnam. Meanwhile, Mr. Hunnam felt disappointed to know he wasn't special. Shortly after that, Angus came gasping for air and told Mr. Hunnam to come with him to the kitchen where he found Mary heavily drunk and drowned in sadness remembering her son. She couldn't be controlled or comforted in any way. In the end, they all carried her out to return to the dorm, but Angus said he didn't want to go home because he enjoyed his time there. Mr. Hunham became even angrier hearing that and said that it was Angus's father's fault that didn't pick him up so he was stuck with him in the dorm. It was then revealed that Angus's father had died and his words just now had hurt Angus's feelings. Mary scolded him for saying such a harsh word. He realized that he had gone too far and felt guilty. The next morning, he did his best to entertain everyone on that lonely Christmas day. He went shopping for a pine tree even though he got only a small and sloping tree. He also gave a modest gift and at the same time an envelope that had just arrived for Angus. The envelope contained the money sent from his mother. That night, they had dinner together and Mary made a special dish for them. It turned out to be a very special event for Angus, who in his entire life had never experienced the atmosphere of a Christmas family gathering. On that occasion, Mr. Hunham once again wanted to show his good intentions to make everyone happy. He freed Angus and Mary to ask out any request. Angus then asked to be invited to go to Boston because he was bored of being in the dorm and wanted to enjoy the holiday atmosphere properly in the rich atmosphere of the city. Mr. Hunnam initially refused because it meant they had to leave the school environment, but Mary kept asking him to go, he finally gave in. He would provide an alibi as a tour activity and agreed to leave school. Mary, on the other hand, asked to be taken to her sister's house in the city. The next day, they started their journey to Boston. Angus looked so happy knowing he would be able to enjoy the Christmas out of the school. 
Before they went to their destination, it dropped Mary off at her sister's house. Angus happily took the suitcase and then came back to help Mary climb the stairs to her sister's flat on the upper floor. Mary was finally able to enjoy the warmth of the family. She started to leave her sadness and embrace the happiness. All left was Mr. Hunham and Angus who were walking together to enjoy the culture of Boston. In the roadside bookstore, a prostitute approached and Mr. Hunham firmly refused her. Angus saw that and joked about it. They then entered the museum. Mr. Hunham began talking about things they saw there. Started with jokes, Angus became engrossed in enjoying Mr. Hunham's story, which at length revealed the history of Polynesia. Then he said that Mr. Hunham would be more respected if he taught more relaxed rather than shouting like he had been doing all this time. Mr. Hunham didn't deny his students' words at all. That night, Mr. Hunham let Angus enjoy himself playing ice skating in the middle of the city. He really wanted to make him happy. When they were about to leave, someone suddenly called. It was a man named Hugh Cavanaugh, a friend of Mr. Hunham from Harvard. Mr. Hunham looked surprised when he met him. Turned out, Hugh had become a professor at Cambridge and Harvard. When asked back, Mr. Hunham answered that he also taught, but for overseas campuses. He lied to his friend in front of Angus, but thankfully, Angus played along and said that he was Mr. Hunham's nephew. He also said that his uncle was currently writing a history book. Hugh was immediately impressed when he heard that. He then replied that he was happy to hear about Mr. Hunham's achievements. He then said goodbye and left. After that, Angus began asking about what just happened and why he lied. Mr. Hunham tried hard to avoid but Angus kept asking. Mr. Hunham then told him that Hugh used to be his roommate at Harvard. Hugh stole his thesis idea but because Hugh was a well-respected student, this fact was then turned around as if Mr. Hunham was the one who stole Hugh's thesis. Mr. Hunham was extremely mad and deliberately hit Hugh, sending him to hospital with broken ribs. That was what made him drop out of Harvard. He was then rescued by the owner of the Barton Academy and accommodated at Barton. That was why he lied so that he wouldn't be ridiculed. He then asked Angus to keep it a secret and Angus agreed. The next morning at the inn, Mr. Hunham discovered something new about Angus. It turned out that he was taking the same medicine as what he regularly took, namely Librium, a medicine that relieves depression. The two turned out to be both depressed. They filled that day all relaxed. No more visiting the museum. They went to town to go bowling. Mr. Hunham even let Angus met a girl. After that, they continued to the cinema. In the middle of the film, Angus excused himself to the toilet, but he wasn't actually going to the toilet. He went outside and Mr. Hunham just realized that after Angus left, he still managed to catch Angus who was about to take a taxi. Turned out Angus didn't intend to run away, but he just wanted to do something and then go back to the cinema. Angus then revealed that he wanted to visit his father. That was his real intention of wanting to go to Boston. They then went on their way. It turned out that they weren't going to a cemetery, but to a mental hospital. Angus's father turned out to be still alive and living in one of the facilities. After waiting for the hospital staff to take his father, they finally met. He was very happy to be able to meet his father and said that he missed him. He also talked about his activities at school. He got good grades and he was involved in a lot of activities at school. He looked so enthusiastic until his father started blabbering nonsense. It was when he realized that he couldn't talk with his father anymore. It completely ruined his mood. On the way home, Angus told Mr. Hunham that it was four years ago when his father started to change. He was often unreasonably violent. As time went on, his mental condition got worse. He started to often commit domestic violence against his mother. That's when he was put in mental hospital and was divorced. After that, his mother immediately sent Angus to a boarding school as if she wanted to disown him. He felt that his mother didn't want to see him because it would remind her of his father. That's why he missed his father so much even though he was afraid that one day, he would be like him. Mr. Hunham encouraged him that he would have his way of life and he wouldn't be walking the same path as his father. He said that even though Angus was often annoying, he was a smart student. He was sure that Angus would make it far in life. That night was filled with dinner with Mary. Fed up with a restaurant atmosphere that had too many rules, they finally took a dish to go and chose to eat outside where they could enjoy the atmosphere more freely. The three of them then went home feeling better. The atmosphere of New Year's Eve in 1971 warmly welcomed them even though it was just the four of them celebrating. The end of year holidays were over and Barton was back full of residents with all their activities. Mr. Hunnam returned with his tired style teaching. Although he now had a little sense of humor and often made a joke that wasn't far from teasing his students. At that time, a car arrived at the school. Not long after that, Miss Lydia came to meet Mr. Hunnam. She told him that he was asked to immediately go to the principal's office, and when he was about to enter, Angus was sitting in front of the office, looking at him with guilt on his face. In the principal's room, it turned out that the mother and stepfather of Angus were present. They asked about Mr. Hunham's field trip, who had taken his son to Boston because the two of them had found the snow globe in Angus's father's hand. 
They were sure that Angus was the one who had given it to him. It was revealed that Angus was forbidden from seeing his father because it would create a sense of hope in his father who suffered from schizophrenia. Yesterday after the visit, Angus's father wanted to go home and then became violent with the guards when they forbade him. Angus's parents felt that Angus indeed had problems with discipline, and they came there to expel him from Barton and then send him to a military school, but before that, they wanted to ensure that the visit to the mental hospital was Angus's idea, who had manipulated his teacher's feelings of sympathy. After taking a breath, Mr. Hunnam finally answered that it was his suggestion to meet his father in a mental hospital. He couldn't bear someone as intelligent as Angus, who was just a victim of lack of love from his parents, to be thrown into a military academy. He, who was originally an egoist, now sacrificed himself for the sake of the future of one of his students. Mr. Woodrup did not defend him. Mr. Hunnam, who he hated, was urged to take the consequences of his actions. Mr. Hunnam didn't waste any second and immediately went to pack his belongings. Before leaving, Mary still had time to visit him and ask what he would do after he left. Mr. Hunnam said that he would go to the University of Syracuse to meet a friend and start his dream project to write a book. Mary then gave him a farewell gift, an empty book that he could use to start his project. Outside the school, Mr. Hunnam met Angus who was waiting for him. Angus then thanked him even though he didn't know what his teacher had sent to defend him. What was clear was that he wasn't expelled and his teacher was fired. They both didn't want to get too emotional, but they both understood. They gave each other encouragement. Angus said that he would try to continue his life with his head held high, as well as Mr. Hunnam. He who had been hiding under the hood of Barton Academy, was ready to move forward to start his new life.